As you said, uh, James, you've seen some a lot of people do it half-assed. Let's see what a full ass looks like. <laughs> I think you planned that. <laughs> yeah. he, that's been in the holster for a couple days now. He's been waiting. Well, you know, <laughs> I think we found our opening. What's happening, everybody? Happy Friday from snowy Toronto, Canada. Uh, Regan here for MB Artists alongside Stephen. I hope you can see us among Stephen's toy collection here. I built a wall. Yeah. The, the, see, it, 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 see, down in the States, Trump's building an actual wall. I'm building a wall of toys. Yeah. So uh, as has been tradition recently at MB Artist, uh, today's subject matter is something I know nothing about. So I'm here uh, basically for the introduction, and then I'm going to be an observer of this podcast because I have no idea what we're talking about. Uh, essentially, if I got this right, you can correct me if I'm wrong, um, we're discussing toy packaging, uh, both retro and current. We have a couple of guests on the line with us. We've got Jamie, who is a very talented artist for MB Artist. Uh, check out his website jamiecokercreations.com and we've also got Morgan who you might remember a few weeks ago was on for our dis toy discussion another toy discussion yeah. and Jamie or, and Morgan does uh, did I say James or Morgan the first time well the thing is is we have a James and a Jamie so not today though we have more that's where yeah, you James screwed me up Mo early James Morgan and Jamie Coker <laughs> oh. And you can, call, you can call me Morgan. I spent 20 years in the Marine Corps. <laughs> so we get your auctions right, Morgan. <laughs> so James Morgan, who does online auctions on the... What's that site called again? You do online auctions on there too. But I do. But the I Collector's never, Shop and... The Collector's Toy Shop Auction, auction and Steakhouse. Collector's yeah. Toy Shop and Auction House. <laughs> yeah. So, lower third right there. Yeah. So yeah, so we've got guys from all aspects here to discuss, and we're basically going to be doing a discussion of some retro casing. See, now I was one of those kids that just tore through the box and got to the toy. Oh yeah. So when you said to me the other day, like, "Don't didn't you ever look at the case?" And it's like, "No, my answer is no. I did not." <laughs> <laughs> it, it went in. Mom had a big garbage bag on Christmas Day and went right in there, and that was the end of it. Did, did you ever open presents like I did? It's like. You, you know those people that would like meticulously unfold the wraps and everything? And just I did that because my Are grandma. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I would, I would, I would, I would like, <laughs> and throw it over my shoulder. No, I, see, I did that with the case. <laughs> oh, you did that with the case. <laughs> yeah, so it, you, you know, it, the, the commentary would be, and there goes $200 yeah. box over his shoulder. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you do the nice unwrapping of uh, the paper to impress my grandmother. Yeah. But then you see the toy and you get excited. So now it's just like, it's go time. Uh, so that's, that's essentially what happened. All right. So um, you're going to be very quiet. What's that? You're going to be very quiet this, this podcast. <laughs> no, I'll ask questions and oh, stuff. Oh, okay. Do you, have a, do you want to kick it off or do you want me to? No, uh, you, you, uh, you jump in and I'll just follow along. All right, you, you sip, your, <laughs> sip your coffee. So essentially what I wanted to do is, since we got into the toy auction stuff and we do a lot of art stuff, I've been trying to find ways of how can we combine the toy realm with our artists. You're kind of doing the Donald Trump thing right now. I am. Well, it's, I'm trying to get over this. Some wall. really big news. <laughs> no, it's more George Bush, eh? Ain't gonna do it. No. Let's carry on. <laughs> carry on. Uh, <laughs> so, so the what I wanted to do is is I, I've noticed that with this the reemergence of the Masters of the Universe line, uh, GI Joe retro, uh, Star Wars retro, essentially everything that's old is new again. So I just wanted to open up a discussion in terms of like taking a look at the nostalgia aspect of it, what we loved, and just the evolution of toy packaging from the 80s to the 90s to the 2000s to today. Um, so that's why I thought of these two gentlemen. Uh, so guys, let's uh, open it up. When you were a kid and you went down the toy aisle, what was it that would attract you to a, to a toy? Mm. The toy. The toy. <laughs> other, other than avoiding the pink aisle like the plague. Because this is how it went. This is how I would do it. You would go to like your local Zellers or Woolco, uh, which is now Walmart. 
and you would walk down the aisle and you would be like, okay, baby stuff, pink aisle, get out of my way. And then you'd see like everything would be blue, blacks, like basically all cool colors. And then you would get sucked in and you're like, oh, there's the Star Wars stuff, oh yeah. And then you would go a couple inches and then you'd go, there's all the Transformers stuff. And then we go, oh, Thundercats, Silverhawks, you know what I mean? And it was just, like the packaging of it was just so cool. And the fact that they were all lined up with the cartoons, you could immediately relate the characters to the toys. Where before in the 70s, you just couldn't. Why not? Uh, there was a law. So little known fact is before 1980, uh, toys had to be essentially, they didn't want other mediums to influence kids. So toys had to be separate from any other type of medium. Mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. could, it couldn't be a cereal box, it couldn't be a, okay. a TV show, it couldn't be anything. And then this little thing called Star Wars happened and all that went out the window. And then they started creating TV shows and then creating the toy lines. Right. So they went the other way. So I, I've, I've stalled a little bit there, gentlemen. And when you were kids and you went down that toy aisle, what was it that attracted you to the toy? <laughs> I think I think they're stuck. I think they're stuck. With me, like it was definitely the artwork. Like it was definitely the print. <clears throat> now and they were different because like Transformers, Masters of the Universe, they used actual artwork. And the crazy part about it was is that artwork was very different than the cartoon. Especially the Masters of the Universe stuff. If you go back now and look at some of the older Masters of the Universe artwork on the toys, yep. you're like, man, where did the cartoon come from? Because this stuff is wicked. Like, it's dark, it's wicked, it's evil looking. Uh, all the artwork on the packaging. And then the cartoon was kind of, I mean, the cartoon was a little dark, but it was also happy, shiny people, you know, most of the time. And then Star Wars actually used the toys themselves in a scene on the box from the movie yeah which was like dag on man that's cool too you know so it was definitely the artwork the packaging and not only that what's the biggest difference from then to today in my opinion is the massness of it all right you go to walmart now you might you know there's a lot of empty spots all right not only is there empty spots it's it's a little bit of just, you know, like one aisle. Everything's in one aisle. Back in the day, Star Wars was one aisle by itself. You know, Transformers and Mask was an aisle by itself. Like the whole massness of the toys was like, and the, there used to be just <coughs> one whole row of Star Wars figures. I mean, rack after rack after rack after rack after rack after rack. To dig, through. you had to dig through them suckers to find the one you want. And there may be forty different figures on that wall. See, that's uh, what that, today that's what might be like six. That's what so, would attract me back in that day was the vastness of an aisle. Like for right. for me, if it was like the wrestling uh, action figures, to walk in and see them all in one place because you didn't all, no one had them all, and and you see the ring and everything. Like it's just it's overwhelming. Yeah. You, and and uh, James is right. You don't see that now. It's like Shelf space, I don't know if it's like shelf space, they want more stuff and it's, it's jam packed into one aisle. There's like, if you go to a Walmart now, it's at least in Canada, it's one, one's kind of like action figures, one is girls stuff and then it's like scientific toys and all that kind of. Yeah, I, I think video games killed it. I think that's what it is just because like we all wanted the, we bought every single toy there. We played with, we played with toys. All right, these kids today, don't play with the, the toy owls for us now. <laughs> <laughs> like it really, it really is. So, so, so do you, getting a little off topic. So, do you think that the point of difference might be that when was it? Do you think that we changed from back in the day? They used to just drop it all. So, if there was forty Star Wars figures, that's what it was. It all just rolled out at once. But now they do everything right. in waves, where it's like get the first six to eight. Here they are, and if they sell, then we'll release the next wave. So it's almost like now it's incrementally released, so you can't really take up the same type of shelf space. Right. 
Yeah. I mean, you think about it, it's like, can you think of how many toy lines there were in, out in the 80s? Even if they were short-lived, you know, they were there just for that little bit of time. And it's like, maybe they had that first wave that came out, but they were gone, you know? It's like, you can't even think of like how many toy lines there are now. There's like a handful compared to what was back in the day. Right. I mean, there were, there's such obscure toy lines that are worth, you know, whatever now. But like back in the day, it was like, oh, uh, there's a Black Star toy series. Yep, I'm going to go get that. Or there's a Micronauts toy series. I'm going to go get that. You know, you don't yeah. see those, uh, those uh, obscure ones. Yeah, it's like now it's got to be like Marvel Legends or it's got to be something from DC, something really huge in order to get that shelf space or to right. even get released. You know, it's, it's sad. Well, just to call back to what James touched on earlier in terms of just specifically He-Man and how dark the artwork is. I remember the Castle Grayskull artwork just capturing my imagination. And it wasn't until late, and that the original story, if you remember the first, I think it was like an eight back. Was it an eight back for He-Man, yeah. the first wave? Yeah. So it was an eight back and when you read, it came with a comic and when you read the comic, it was basically Conan was like this barbarian who came out of the forest and was battling this Skeletor dude. And they both had two halves of the sword, which completely disappeared. But it wasn't uh, in, the co in the cartoon. But it wasn't until later that I learned that it was all inspired off of Conan and Bernie Wrightson and his paintings. So when you look at that, you can totally see the correlation now, you know, like 40 years later. And now with the, with the Origins line they've just introduced, they're essentially calling back to that original line which calls back to Bernie Wrightson and it's just amazing how you can just do these one degree of separations to go down the line and connect the packaging to the artwork as yeah, like this artwork right here oh that's sick <laughs> that's sick battle cat yeah that's the battle cat you got that one coming there you go <laughs> that's what that's what I hate about Canada. We don't get anything until like a year later, and then you guys are like, whatever. That was so is that a, is that a new one? Or? Yeah, that's the new line. Oh, okay, but there. So the question is, do, do either of you know the? So use that battle cat as an example. That painting, is that a new painting based on the original, or is that the original artwork? No, I think it's a new painting based off the original. Correct. Um, I think I looked up. Well, after I got this one, I think I looked up the original artwork for it and it's slightly different yeah i believe it's slightly different than the original but but i'm really loving how they're they're, they're getting back into original artwork like if you look at the joe classifieds and the new transformers and you look at the artwork there it's beautiful now obviously they're they're targeting towards us but when you look at like the like i have an example of the star wars black series like where did they go wrong like it's so bland and so boring and they're trying to salvage it by doing these uh, carbonized version in red, green, blue and every different color. Uh, and even like I've noticed that uh, toys that are geared towards, I took my kid for her birthday to Toys R Us the other day. Yes, we still have those in Canada. Um, but uh, they, yeah, we still have Toys R Us. <laughs> uh, but they, they had a whole wall of Fortnite figures and they were so, they were all flat. Like, there was nothing dynamic, there was nothing artistic. It was just flat, colorful packaging. And it's just, yeah. and it's just, is that how they, did they do like some sort of uh, um, research and said, hey, kids don't like art? Like, I don't understand where the gap is here between our generation that really gravitates to the artwork aspect of it and then the younger generation and they just seem to keep pumping uninspired packaging towards them. The, the, I agree with that. The thing is though, I mean, and having come from an agency world where like with, with my previous uh, career, these guys don't care. Like you, you could hire a creative director from a company who made laundry detergent and he's going to come in and he's going to do the colors he likes and he's going to like that one person basically makes these decisions for an entire team of people that execute them. Yeah. And it's always going to follow that person. So if that person is not of the age to appreciate this, if he's not a collector of toys, he may just think that black is very sleek and, and they'll come up with their whole thing. And, and a lot of this stuff, that's why it falls flat. And it, it takes somebody coming in who understands the product 
who will create something better. And that, that, so, I mean, that doesn't shock me because a lot of the people that make the decisions on this stuff are not actually fans of the product or toy. We lost Jamie. Yeah, whoever did the packaging must have made the last three Star Wars movies, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I remember I was talking about the last three Star Wars movies with Harden, and he says, God, uh, uh, when we did the thing on Justice League, mm -hmm. and he was saying, we were talking about how the execs got on, involved with the Justice League, and mm -hmm. they brought in Josh Whedon, and he's like, why, did he bring the Disney execs with him? And that's probably what ruined the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, like, so, and, and that's unfortunate, because here's another thing, and, and, and James... You being an avid toy collector would be a good question at this. At what point, and I'm glad they got away from it, at what point did they start doing this crap where everything had to be in a clamshell? Like, do you remember trying to get CDs out in the day when they are like yeah. this? And then they started... That's a, that's a 90s move. Yeah. yeah. So do, do you have any... Do, do you know why they went this route, or is it another one of the... What do you mean by in a clamshell? The whole thing's in a clamshell. So if you look at, so basically the new methodology is stick them in a box. Yeah. Because you can throw this, you could, because it's easy to pop open. Oh, like you mean the clear is the clamshell. Yeah, is look, it? the whole thing. Look, yeah. the whole thing's a right, clamshell, right? right. right? You Where, basically have to cut it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Essentially, you got to give yourself paper cuts all over your hands, just get to the damn figure. <laughs> and then you, and then here, here's the old vintage, right? The clam, the clamshell is, well, it's not is that, clamshell. That, that's not an original, though. That's no. This is the new one. Yeah. Where the vintage. Yeah, one. It looks different. Yeah, because basically they, the the only thing that's plastic is what's holding the figure, right? In the '90s, everything was plastic. It was like holy crap, man! I remember looking at these, and I didn't want to touch it because I would kill my hands. I'm guessing it's just a theft deterrent with all the ties and stuff too. Yeah, that's it. We're worried about people stealing action figures. <laughs> well, <laughs> actually, I, it is exclusive. Like it is like the the. That whole line of Marvel, they did do that. I don't know if it was because of the Build-A-Figure pieces or what. Maybe people were stealing just the pieces to the Build-A-Figure. I don't know, but the, yeah, the clamshell stuff was like, it sucked. Yeah. So, so I guess the next question is, we talked about what we recalled in terms of our childhood, and, and I basically ranted about today's toys. <laughs> But now it seems like there's a divergent in terms of two parallels, depending on who the market's being shot at. They're, they're going back to the vintage look. Here I have the Skeletor re-release, and they're doing more of this methodology uh, and marketing it to us as like retro or vintage, but they still do this. And then they also do for younger generations, like the, I saw the Dune line came out, the McFarlane Dune series. Yeah, and and that's another thing I don't get is like McFarlane's sculpts are second to none, but his packaging are just following the basic flat color issues. And yeah, the DC does it too. The DC multiverse, like they're just playing. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like yeah. like this. I think it's like when it comes to toys, this is where less is le less is more doesn't apply. That. Yeah. Like by my There's memory, to attract the eye, it's like they're almost relying on the sculpt to sell the figure in its entirety. Yeah, and it's like half of the fun back in the day of getting these figures was seeing that artwork on there and being like, "Oh, this is really cool," and it sold me even more on the figure. Like, there's some ugly toys that I bought back in the day just because I loved the artwork on the box. This is very and much that's not like the original, a lot right? Now. Yeah, it's absolutely yeah. original. Yeah, I can remember that. No, and you could you could also. You could also tell which figure by the artwork. When you go now, it's just a line of black, a line of blue. You know, every figure looks the same. And also from a collectability standpoint, and you can uh, talk about this firsthand experience when doing your auctions, James. Uh, when people are looking to get back into it and recapture that youth, if you have the box to it and the condition of the box, people go crazy for it. Yes, 100%. And like that's something I didn't even realize as much until I started doing the auctions. I'm like, man, like, cause at first I was doing a lot of loose stuff and then I started doing unboxed stuff. And I'm being like, man, like people really want the box. So now like I put out way more stuff with the box than I ever did before. Uh, because like everybody wants the box. Oh yeah. 
Well, it seems like there's two type of collectors now. You have the collectors that actually enjoy the loose figures, and when you look at the, how they display them in their house, they basically have stacks and stacks and stacks of loose figures and shelves. And the alternative is you have these people that essentially just rebuild a toy aisle. And right. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you take a picture, and it looks beautiful because I immediately go on an LSD trip of being in a toy aisle again. But none of the toy is shown, it's all the box art. So I think it's just a matter of what type of nostalgia are you trying to recapture? The experience of being in the toy aisle or the experience of playing with your toys and enjoying the toys. Right, and then there's the, and then there's the, the, the people that are a step above that, which is really the people that I don't understand. That's why I was talking to you about them when you were talking about buying that sealed He-Man for you know 2,200 bucks. That collector is a whole different breed to me. Like the people that want to buy stuff sealed and never open it. You know, those are the, like, they're, they're, they're out there too. You know, they're out there in volumes that just want it brand new, never open it just to look at the package. All right. And then you got, like I said, you have the middle person like me. I like the package, but I also want the figure in my hand. And then you have the person that don't care, but the the sealed package I'll never understand, but. Yeah, I, I think I think that uh, that's a uh, that's a thread from our previous conversation when you said your mom bought one in the package to put away yeah. and one to play with. So I, I yeah. think I think I think you are uh, naturally brought on to the duality of it. <laughs> right. Yeah, that sounds so much like me though. One, yeah, one to, one to, the ones that are really cool with the really cool art. You buy that one to have the package and display that, just put it on a shelf somewhere, and the other one you take out, fiddle with it a little bit. Oh, this is awesome. Put a, display him someplace else. So let's flip, right. let, let, let's approach this from the artist aspect. We talked about the toy aspect and the collectability aspect. Let's talk about the artist aspect. So Morgan, Morgan, I'm gonna uh, James, Morgan, put on your artist hat for a second. Uh, in terms of when you do tattoos and and uh, Jamie, when you decide you want to do drawings, and I've got a couple examples of. Uh, Jamie's villains line here that he did. Here's his uh, his Coco and his Skeletor having hissy fits. You're showing it to them. The camera's over there. <laughs> you know, I want them. They've to already see it seen. Oh, it. they've already seen it. Right. Sorry, guys. There you go. Avail available on mbartist.com and jamiecokercreations.com. So, so let's let's tackle this from an artist. So when you have people coming in to do, because uh, I know that that the one of the biggest. Uh, things I've seen is people are getting their nostalgia put in tattoo form. Oh yeah. And and people want to collect artwork of their nostalgia and toys that they collected. So I guess my first question would be what would possess a person to want to put it on their skin for one, but do you get that a lot, James? Yeah, I actually yeah. Uh, I've got a I've got a guy coming in next week that's getting a He-Man and a Battle Cat with Casa Grayskull in the background on his leg. Oh, really? Yeah. Have you seen you seen Mike Clark's hands, haven't you? Uh, yeah, because they're in the shot all the time. <laughs> he's, got, he's got the power swords on both thumbs, and then he has Panther and Battle Cat on both. He's just got Panther on one, and then Battle Cat on the other. I wonder if that comes in handy when he's hitchhiking. They see that power sword and they, they're more likely to pull over. <laughs> it, it makes his thumbs up more impressive. Um, so like, just from an artist standpoint, like, is it more enjoyable to tap into these characters when you're doing these tattoos or these drawings, guys? Oh, boy. Um... Hmm. Well, it, James. Well, Jamie's thinking about it. I'll kick it over to you. You're, you've got. You just said you have a tattoo of a He-Man and Battle Cat coming up. Oh, I, I love it. Like, yeah. I, like I love doing them. Like I, if I had, like I've been thinking about doing something like that myself on me. Because I, I mean, I have a lot of tattoos, but I've yet to get an actual toy tattoo. But it's coming. <laughs> I got the feeling. It's coming. Well, I'll, I'll, I set it up as a red herring, guys, because. The one thing that I wanted to, to, to talk about, and, and, and I'm going to throw it to you two just to, to validate the idea for me. So 
in these auctions, people are buying these loose figures. And I noticed in yours specifically, James, you have those cool acrylics where you can take a loose figure, plop it in, and then you have the discarded box art in the back. My idea was, wouldn't it be cool if I could, instead of the box art, if you don't have that box art to slide in, wouldn't it be cool if we could get an original artist print or original and slide it in with the toy to combine the two worlds? No, like I thought that's where you were going with this and it's an awesome idea. If you actually like get those cases like I do with the card backs and actually print those off and put them in the background with the figure, I think it's, it's it'll, it, you'll kill it. You'll absolutely kill it. What do you think, Jamie? Oh my gosh. When you first ran that idea by me, it's like, man, just nerdgasm, boom, just exploded in my head. It was like, yeah, I, I, I couldn't even, like, I heard the idea, I could comprehend it, but the back of my head was like, just like a repeat of like the words, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. It was like, I don't know, it was like uh, being able to, uh, uh, you know, kind of... Uh, contribute to the whole legacy of the toys that we grew up with you know um that was something actually when i was a kid there was a point where i actually drew my own like artwork that i thought would be on boxes i remember showing it to my sister back in the day mm -hmm. and um this is it's odd how sometimes these things come back around and uh yeah it's it's something i think would be a fantastic idea i'd love to do that yeah so i think we got absolutely guys and i've seen it like somebody tries to do it Somebody tries to do it kind of half-ass on, on Facebook. Every once in a while, Facebook will pop up with this ad. And it's always, like, it's for a birthday card. Or it's always for a birthday card or something. And it comes with one little retro Star Wars figure with the card in a frame. And it's always, it's always a beater, too. Like, it's always, like, it's like 35 40 bucks. You can send them this birthday card with the figure, like, in a thing. Uh, I mean, so people are like kind of shot it around, but they, I haven't seen it done right yet. So we want, we want to, we want to, we want to hear from you guys in terms of what you think. We've got two validations on the idea. We want to hear from you guys down in the comments below what you think of that idea. And maybe if you've got a spin on it that we haven't even thought of, what do you think of it, Regan? No, I think it's a good idea. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, so are you talking about are you talking about like life into those loose figures too, you know? Are you yeah, talking about like doing a sketch of the original artwork because you don't have the box? Yeah, I think that's cool. <laughs> yeah, cuz I it's like I have like I, I I would go nuts on like Silverhawks and to get the sometimes to get a good figure you have to buy a lot. So I'd have like right. three or four Quicksilvers or a couple extra steel grass and it would be like, and then I saw what you did with the G.I. Joes. I'm like, oh my God, if I could get like a Jamie Coker print put in the back with that loose figure and get him maybe to even, uh, we'll do like remarks on it so it customizes it. How cool would that be? Or even make it that, hey, you like this figure? We have this case. You like this artist? You want to get a commission? We'll put it all together and away you go, ippity boppity boo. And suddenly we're sued by Disney. But uh, I think it's a great idea. And I think, how about the three of us put our heads together and let's, as you said, uh, James, you've seen some, a lot of people do it half-assed. Let's see what a full-ass looks like. <laughs> <laughs> I think you planned that. <laughs> yeah. he, that's been in the holster for a couple of days now. He's been waiting. Well, you know, <laughs> I think we found our opening. Yeah. <laughs> so full ass, full ass production. So now that we're done making an ass out of ourselves, uh, what do you guys? Uh, let's uh, let's wrap this all up uh, in terms of uh, final thoughts in terms of toy packaging and. Where do you think? Let's, we talked about the past. We talked about the present. What about the future? Do you ha, let's put a bow on this and talk about what you think the future will bring for toy packaging? Oh man, um, I certainly <laughs> hope that they continue. Um, I think the nostalgia lines might look at what Masters is doing and, and try to incorporate a little bit more of the um, uh, the idea of actual artwork on the box. But for uh, current toy lines like Fortnite, like some of these other ones that are coming out, I think they're gonna continue doing that very pared down, sparse, just color 
color block type stuff to uh, to sell the artwork just because they probably think it's more cost effective or they just rely on the fact that that maybe they don't put as much um, emphasis on the collectability of the toy. They just think it's, you know, it's just a product. But, uh, uh, the nostalgia line, I definitely see them incorporating more of the artwork. James? Well, I hope so too. Like, um, I hope it, I hope like the, the, the uh, Masters of the Universe line and a couple others makes other ones step it up. Because it, like even Legends, like Legends, Legends has been living off no other toy lines coming out, all right? No other great toy lines have been coming out in the last six, seven, eight years. So Marvel's just been pumping out Legends, just pumping them out. Because, like, they're the only thing on the toy aisle. So people have been buying them. And that let's be honest, their artwork sucks, too, on the box. Like, And all they would have to do is take that character, take a page out of the comic book, and just slap it on the package. All right, that's all they would have to do. So I'm kind of 50-50, Steve. Like, I don't know what they're going to do, but I hope, because the Fortnite thing's a phase, all right? It's a video game. It's a phase. It's not a movie, not going to live forever. It's going to die, all yeah. right? So hopefully Star Wars, Marvel kind of pick up on the G.I. Joe, Masters of the Universe stuff and start trying to do something with the pack because the packaging on the Marvel stuff for like the bigger figures, like the, the stuff that comes with vehicles, like the uh, ghost rider or the punisher, or even the little squirrel girl with the scooter, that art works pretty good because yeah. it has a big background, but the other yeah. stuff kind of just sucks. So I'll be honest, like I haven't been excited about a Marvel legend in two or three years, mm. you know, ever since this new stuff has started coming out. So even the artwork on the G.I. Joe Classifieds on the, is pretty good on the back. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Like, they, they have that yeah. master painting that's really awesome. And if you line them all up, that, that one panel on the, on the uh, one side creates an overall image. I thought that was brilliant. Yeah. yeah. So I think there's, I think, I think there's hope. Uh, what I'd like to see is uh, maybe some of these suits that Regan was talking about who really don't care. Uh, can listen to their kids because if you if you talk to the kids they love the artwork and I think that a whole generation is missing out on what we got to experience so yeah. I think that's a good way to do it so I think we've pitched a good idea we had a stroll down memory lane and uh, <laughs> and we have a hope for the future and the last thing we want to do so we want your feedback not only on the idea we pitched but we're going to be uh, giving away a print we're going to be giving away uh, this Skeletor having a hissy fit on a He-Man toy by Jamie Coker. So uh, put your uh, put your comments down below and subscribe. And uh, Regan here is going to pick a winner that we'll announce on the uh, next podcast. People buy that too. Look behind us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. E even James looks, got one. Looks nice on the wall. J James has got a canvas coming to him. Yeah, sweet. Awesome. All right, awesome. guys. I want to thank you for your time and. Uh, until next time, and I'll see you in a couple hours, Mr. Morgan. <laughs> All right, sounds good. All right, you gentlemen. Twenty-five pound box, Stephen. Oh God. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Between me, you, and everybody who watches this, I got told I I, I got put on a budget. <laughs> <laughs> I got one of these. Bad, Stephen. <laughs> and I got to do, but I have a problem. <laughs> well, the, the good thing the good thing is though is what you can always tell her is is like you you'll never lose that money you can get rid of it at any time for the same amount you paid for it 99.9 .9, if not more percent of the time well i do know this on a couple of pieces i got off you james i'm gonna if i ever have to get to that point i'm gonna have to give you a call first because i think both you and i are gonna have equal uh, uh nostalgic uh, investment on it, especially that uh, that rare luke skywalker that you sent me with the oh, blue yeah. saber oh yes yeah you gotta open that thing up <laughs> <laughs> i gotta i gotta i gotta i gotta take a video of me playing it in the bathtub and getting it all <laughs> 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 well we'll see what makes you more insulted the fact that i tore that thing apart and got it all wet or me <laughs> naked in the bathtub <laughs> 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 all right guys thanks for your time Thanks, guys. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Yeah.
But. Thank you guys for tuning in this week. If you're interested in some of the artwork we were showing today, be sure to check out mdartist.com, which also has links to all the artist sites that, are, that we work with. And anything else you want to add? Any auctions coming up you want to talk about? Just the, uh, the Lost Toy Box every Friday at 5 p.m. on the auction toy shop, the toy shop, collector's toy shop auction house. You <laughs> can't remember it either. <laughs> and uh, check out mbartist.com uh, for uh, all your artwork needs and uh, cap can for all of our comic books. Some good stuff on there, guys, and something to keep in mind as well is when, when you shop on mbartist.com, you are shopping with independent artists, um, you're supporting small businesses, and uh, you're doing a good thing. So with the holidays coming up, with, with all of that, um, it's a great spot to pick up some stuff. Fast shipping available. Uh, anything else you want to add to that? Uh, Not trying to sell you on it, but I think sometimes people get confused that they're you know, supporting, you know, the man. What are you talking about? I'm trying to get I'm I need sales, man. No, He's an artist. <laughs> I'm an artist. There's no shows. Help me feed my kids. <laughs> but uh, definitely worth checking out. Um, there's some very cool stuff on there, original stuff, um, some, some reimagination stuff. If you can see around the studio at all, you'll see that I've pretty much decorated my entire studio with MB Artist artwork um, just because I like it. It's... it's uh, it's a throwback. This is my place of work, and I'm, I'm happy to be able to decorate it the way I want. And, uh, and yeah, I got all my stuff from every artist, pretty much. Uh, we, Except for Pac-Man. Before we say goodbye, we, we've only got one thing that we forgot to do. What's that? Batman!